You know, the military is working on a cyborg beetle to use in its arsenal. Now, we're not talking about, you know, the German car, as I first thought when I heard about this. <laughs> no, that little thing, that's a bug, an insect. It's part robot, part bug. Researchers have actually managed to implant miniature muscle and neural stimulators to control the creature's flight. So what's the ultimate goal here? Scott Fontaine is a military reporter at the News Tribune. Uh, Scott, thanks for being with us. All right, so, so they take, the scientists take electrodes. And, and what do they do yeah. with them? They implant them where? Uh, it sounds like they plant the electrodes in the brain and in the muscles. And kind of attached to the back of the beetle is a, uh, is a little radio transmitter. And the scientist uh, standing off to the side with a remote control can tell it to fly left, fly right, fly up, fly down, everything like that. Yeah, take off, landing, turns. I mean, it's really incredible. Can, can they control the beetle so that the beetle performs in a way that it would not otherwise perform, for example, sustained flight? Uh, it sounds like, I mean, I think the beetle is still limited by, what it can, what if, by physics, what it can and can't do, but it sounds like that these electrodes would, it pretty much overtakes uh, the beetle's free will, if you will, about where it wants to go. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is, what are the potential military uses? How can we use this to our advantage? Well, I think it's still a far way off from, uh, from the battlefield. Right now, this project is being funded through DARPA, which is kind of the Pentagon's research and development wing. They give grants to things that you know, may or may not work and oftentimes have you know, pretty big technological advances down the road. But uh, even on the website for this particular project, on, on DARPA's website, uh, they talk about the possibility of implanting uh, maybe a microphone on it or a chemical sensor. Right. Uh, they really see this kind of as the next step in evolution between human and animal uh, cooperation, really. I mean, they, they reference the horse and buggy and maybe, you know, right. uh, a, a bird in a, in a coal mine. Yeah, I mean, you could implant a microphone on a beetle, fly it into a suspected terrorist's hut or an enemy's location and simply listen in on the conversations and the planned attacks. It's amazing. And they'd never know. Absolutely. All right. Let me ask you about human applications. I mean, someday might they, might they use this on human beings? Well, uh, I don't think they're quite ready to say that yet. I think uh, insect brains are a tad simpler than humans, or at least I hope so. And uh, <laughs> well, but, Judging you know, by some guests we've had. <laughs> Well, that's true. <laughs> Go ahead. But I think we're still a way. I think we're still a ways off before, you know, maybe applying certain things to more advanced, uh, more advanced creatures, including mammals. Yeah, I mean, it's really pretty incredible. I've also been reading they might be able to use these as couriers to get information to inaccessible locations. Uh, that that sounds plausible, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, just meaning the advances in you know in flash drives we have now make you know, gigabytes of storage, you know, the size of, of a coin. And, you know, maybe you can uh, tape it to the, you know, the bottom of one of these bugs and fly it, you know, somewhere where no one will know it's coming. Yeah. And, and so the it, is the Defense Department funding this? How does this work? Yeah, the Defense Department has, uh, like I said, the Research and Development Wing is called DARPA. And they, uh, they give grants usually for, uh, for projects that last just a few years, but they... The idea is to just kind of sometimes throw everything against the wall, see what sticks, and hope that it has some, some advantages that they can use down the road. Wow. Just think, uh, the future may be insects and what we can do right. on the battlefield with them. Scott Fontaine, uh, a News Tribune military reporter, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, anytime. We've always wanted to be the fly on the wall. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, there you literally, go. right? <laughs> I just wonder what animal rights groups think. PETA, don't start sending us emails. We were just talking, that's all. <laughs>